We talked about two great movies. Yeah, what two good movies. Yeah. Let's, let's lower the stakes yeah. here, because the next one I'm going to talk about is Brooklyn. Oh, man. I don't want to speak. This was such a snore fest. Such a snore fest. It was like some 70-year-old woman's story of how her parents met. That's that it. they made into a film. Yeah. I actually, you know, usually when I try to watch these, I really try to make a good effort. I had to put the 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 se- like the second third of the film on fast forward. Once she went back to to Ireland or wherever she was from, I don't know Scotland, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's Ireland, it's relevant, quite obviously. Yeah. I knew exactly what was going to happen. Like it was so so blatantly obvious that she was going to still go back to him. Of course. Yeah, she like flirts with like the ginger kid who's in all those movies nowadays. But then. Uh, oh, yeah. And, like, the only, like, real conflict is that she didn't, like, tell her mother that she was married for a while. Yeah, and, and when she does, it's like, oh, it's no big deal. No I kind of knew. A lot of people that are watching this probably have never seen Brooklyn, and we're just kind of sadly rambling about it. Yeah, it's, a very, it's a very vanilla story about the conflict of, like, a new immigrant to the U.S. and what she faces when she first gets here from Ireland. And then her, you know, family member dies in Ireland, so she goes back, and it's that distinction between the two places, and she feels pulled back home. Mm. And it it's is very so vanilla. wretchedly boring. <laughs> I don't know how it got into this. It, this yeah, I, it doesn't belong here. This field. Like, all right. So my I, wife, my wife Anna is reading the book, and she hasn't seen the movie yet. And I was talking about the movie how it's so boring. She's like, yeah, the book is kind of like that too. It's just like <laughs> it's just it's just it's just there. Can I just tell you? It, I, it, look, it's a ro- it's a romance story for very 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 basic people. Okay, and, and very very basic women. And, but what is it doing in it's the best? Men. What is Why it? is it in the best picture? I have no idea. Well, it wasn't brilliantly shot. It, it wasn't brilliantly shot. Are they edited. thinking they're doing a little something for the ladies? Because they have a march in there. Everybody's loving this. Even the ladies. EJ, you're a cinematographer. Okay. Um, this is one of those movies that, that people would just be like, oh, well, it's shot nice. I mean, it's... It's competent. It's, it's competent. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's why I would describe it. It's like, okay, there was nothing that turned me off. I was so bummed out the whole time we were watching it. It's just a period, dusty department store boarding house film. But just think of, like, even just television nowadays. I mean, like, you watch Better Call Saul, and some of those shots are breathtaking. And that's television. Yeah. Yeah. This is a motion picture for the big screen. You know, what, what, what makes <laughs> in the Oscars, in the best of the year. And I can't even tell you a shot I liked in that film. I can't tell you one. No. Well, I mean, what makes a show like Better Call Saul interestingly shot is are the ideas of the shots, not the the sort of shallow aesthetic of it. Yeah, Th- this had a really shallow aesthetic. It wasn't like, trying to communicate anything. Saccharine with everything period. It did. Like it has a ninety eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Why ninety eight percent? And 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 people There's are no, that's not called. People are saying things like like a g- fantastic date movie. But look how great taste I have. I think it's like a sad movie that you take someone you're going to break up with. And it's like, <laughs> let's just get miserable and decide that we don't like each other and just yeah. go our separate ways. Let's be let, let's be dying to go home at the end of the night. There was one scene that I was like, I hope this scene goes on forever. That really beautiful um, Celtic, uh, like Gaelic singing. Oh, that, that was, was like, the was one like a, shining moment. There was a male singer who sang this song. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and was I was really... like, this is like a great CD. It, yeah. it, it, can it was can the, we just get to the end with this? It was the only moment that communicated, that communicated anything human in the film yeah. was, was these sad men who had been so nice. displaced. Like, I, that was the one moment where I was like, oh, this, you know, is sad. The, the, the story overall wasn't even a story of adversity. No. Yeah. It, it was kind of, like, pretty easy for her to get there. It was pretty easy there. for her to go home, and There's, she could have stayed She didn't have left. one leg. She yeah. didn't have cancer. Yeah. She it wasn't was, pregnant. She wasn't even ugly. The story was about a person who went from there to there. <laughs> and she was, like, kind of mousy, so that maybe that was an issue. Yeah. Yeah. But you were, you were like, maybe I'll like it. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of into this, like, the you know, pale Irish girls and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I like, I like the fair ladies, yeah. but... And like she shit in the pot in the beginning. That was kind of funny. <laughs> she shits in the pot and then it's all down. It's downhill from the shitting in the pot. I want you to stay here with me.